I guess we continue the siege, though, even though there's no one inside the garrison. Oh my goodness. Game, there is no one defending this castle. We could literally just gently tap on the door. We don't need to build siege towers to get into the castle. There's no one there. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. The legendary Sir Spiff has just completed his first siege battle. With only about 80 men on our side, we managed to take over a fort of men, which had slightly more than we did. Admittedly, most of them were militia, so they were pretty easy pickings, but still, the castle is now ours. Most importantly, we're going to gain a metric ton of renown, influence, and morale. Our troops are going to be very excited for our victory. Oh my goodness, 36 prisoners. Okay, I mean, we'll take all of them, why not? Oh, and yes, we are almost nearing 1 million gold. I have no idea what happens when we hit 1 million gold, but we've almost done it. I really do think one thing which has completely broken the balance of this game, and it may not necessarily be intentional, is the fact that your inventory can have as many items in it as you like, and also those items don't go off. If you might remember, Remember, sometimes if you got food in Mountain Blade Warband, say like, I don't know, cheese or meat, it would go off eventually and be pretty much useless. In comparison, in this game, there is actually nothing stopping you from buying one million's worth of grain and never needing to buy any food for the rest of the game. All you'd need is about 124 Stumpter Horses, and let's be honest, they're only 100 each, which is pretty easy to get, yeah. This game is balked. Anyway, we need to go get ourselves some more troops now that we've done that fight. Oh yes, we're able to recruit a lot of nice troops here. Lovely stuff. And actually, I do need to upgrade my existing army. And of course, when I say upgrade, I mean we're not upgrading them. We're quite simply pretending we're going to upgrade them. And then instead of, of course, paying this, we're just going to click onto the inventory screen, hit apply, and oh no, we don't have to pay for upgrades anymore. Lovely stuff. Oh, I do enjoy upgrading troops the way the game intended it to happen. Oh, and there we have it. We've just hit 1 million gold. Oh, we've finally done it. Lovely stuff indeed. All it took was an income of 17,000 from our workshop in Vostrum. And how much would we get if we sold our Vostrum one? Oh my goodness, 103,000 dinars for selling this workshop. Right, I think that's a, that's a very unique exploit to say the least. So the reason why, why carpentry places is so broken in the current build of the game is the fact that you could buy a workshop, in two days it's going to start making a around about this much money randomly, and then when it's at its peak of around 14,000 to 17,000, you sell it and you more than quadruple your money. It's a very unique way of getting a lot of money very early on in the game. Also another way you can get up to that money very quickly is to fight people. Now you might be thinking that I'm suggesting fighting in the arena, but I'm actually not, not in the slightest. Fighting in the arena can be a challenge, it's not exactly very fun, especially if you lose because you're placing bets on yourself. Oh god, there's the army of the enemy. Right, we're out of here. They can take back that castle that we took. Uh, we don't need it. <laughs> yep, they've got 500 men. Uh, we cannot fight that, and so we're out of here. Admittedly, Poros only has 50 dudes, so um, we could actually take over this entire city. You know what? We're going to give it a try. If it doesn't work, it's okay. We'll roll back a day. Let's besiege the town. My goodness, please, if this works. If this works, this is so broken. Do -boo 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 -boo. Build that siege camp. Build that siege camp. <laughs> Hopefully the enemies don't come, because if they do, uh, we're royally beans. Oh my god, this is working. Are we going to be able to take Poros? Oh, the influence we're going to get from this is going to be absolutely ridiculous. Oh no, they come with an army. Time for us to leave. A few moments later. Oh my god, I did send the troops and the troops won. Oh my god. Goodness, that was not expected. We killed 65 of the attacking army. We lost 30 of our own. Oh, that's the advantage of tactics, ladies and gentlemen. It just works. We're at your mercy. Oh, yes, you are my prisoner now. Or maybe I could set them free. Yes, you fought well. Go. Go now. <laughs> There's no reason to keep them all as prisoners for the sole reason that we have a lot of money, so we don't need to ransom them back or anything. Oh, my lord. 73 prisoners. Oh, that's going to be a lot of prisoners. I don't even know if this is uh, particularly a viable amount of prisoners for us to carry. Apparently we can only have 21 prisoners. Okay, something tells me I'm going to have to get rid of a couple of these crappy prisoners. There we go. We'll get rid of these um, these ones which aren't very good, like the militia archers. There you go. This looks more like it. We're only about six prisoners over the prisoner cap. Lovely stuff indeed. Oh, and that's a lot of loot as well. Oh, that's a very tasty amount of loot. And that was the fight of the century. Time for us to move on. <laughs> We're in a lovely situation right now, ladies and gentlemen. Admittedly, we do need to get some more men in the army, but still, progress is being made. Oh my goodness, I've to selling all of this equipment. This is absolutely ludicrous. This is the biggest trade deal in the history of trade deals. We were getting 22,000, I think, from this, which is a lovely sale for us. And I'm pretty sure our party is actually almost up to maximum strength, but apparently it's going to take us about 22 weeks in order to actually heal all of our dudes. So here's a little trick. What you do is you wait in the town. Sure, you have to pay their wages, but it won't actually affect us for the sole reason that we 
just have so much money to give. So it's going to allow us to quickly heal up all of our men and at the same time it increases our skill in medicine. Oh, and if you want another way of making a lot of quick money in this game early on, my advice would be to simply hop into any town and you'll notice there's places called back streets. Now you can fight the three or so people in the back street. You can even have your companions do it for you. And if you defeat them, you'll gain about a thousand gold. So one way in which you can make a lot of easy money in this game is quite simply immediately hire a companion, go to a back street, defeat all the people in the back street, and in return, you'll get some pretty valuable supplies which you can sell for some nice profit. You can repeat this in all of the back streets in all of the towns, and they keep respawning as well. So it's a nice near infinite source of money early on if you don't want to actually get into the trading side of things. Although why on earth that would be the case, I have no idea, because trading is lovely. Now what's happening here is a fight is happening between a band of mercenaries and one of the rival lords. Now the mercenaries are probably going to lose, but that doesn't really matter. What matters is that the rival lord is going to be significantly wounded after this battle, and that is when Sir Spiff jumps into the picture to announce his arrival and say hello to the rival lord, and mostly ask for him to hand over all of his hidden tea leaves, because I know he's got them hidden somewhere. Anyway, that was a lovely fight, now we're going to fight the enemy lord. Well done for finishing that one battle, my friend, but uh, are you ready to defeat me? Oh my goodness, I didn't know you could do this. You can actually try and win over enemy lords using the charm mechanic in the game. Right, this seems a smidge broken. That was a critical success. <laughs> No, no, we can't do this. We can't just buy an enemy lord. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, this is so wrong. Oh, I love it, though. Oh, that was another success. Okay, so we just need one more success, and then Dysporian is going to switch sides. Oh, my God, right, Bam. That one was ineffective. Oh, I think we got a few more chances. 59% chance. Success. Oh, God. What? No. Oh, we gained 40 points. In, we gained a point in charm. I made you feel the case well, and I want to bound to support you no matter how it ends. What the heck? Okay, he's a friendly now. He's a friendly. Oh, Lord. <laughs> this is so bad. Goodbye, Dysporian. Um, that was uh, a unique trade deal, to say the least. Uh, it's, <laughs> I found an enemy lord. I went up to him. I said, hey, um, we should probably not be at war. How about you join my side instead of the bad evil side? You have 58 men. We could probably use those 58 men. And we have four simple, quick questions where I easily laid out the benefits of tea and drinking tea. He was just like, yeah, why not? I'll join you. Oh, goodness. This game. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so many broken things. All right, let's see if we can take this castle. Oh, 51 defenders. We've got this. Let's besiege this castle. All right, bam, here we go. We're ready to fight. It's time for us to take this castle. So it's time for Sir Spiff to once again take the exact same castle just a couple of days later, because why not? We get a bunch of influence from this, and sure, we lose a bunch of men, but that's a sacrifice I'm more than willing to take. Also, I don't really have to do much in sieges. I just tell my men to go do stuff right. Auto-deploy and begin assault. And there they go. They're just going to all do their own thing, and whatever they choose to do is probably the best thing. I'm just gonna ride up to here and hop off my little horsey. Oh my lord. You know what? The AIs, they're pretty vicious with their little bows and arrows. They're really trying to give us a proper snipey time. At the same time, I think I can... Oh, that's a nice headshot. Oh, the accuracy of this bow is insane. Or maybe it's just my character and this bow being combined. All right, and up we climb. Oh wait, I forget. To climb up, you have to look up, as is the science. Oh, we've lost our first dude. What a shame. An Imperial Archer. Oh dear, oh dear. Oh, and our second dude. Hello, what are you doing? Just sat down there, my friend. You having fun? I don't really think you should just be stood right there, Mr. Watchman. Oh my goodness, are we already almost won? Feels like it. Well, with uh, arrows basically sticking out of almost all of my body, I'd say this has been a very successful battle. We don't really take that much damage anymore because we're now using some pretty high-tier armor, as well as our stats are providing us a bunch of resistances to most damage. But I don't think we lost many men in this fight at all. We lost one man, apparently. Three were wounded and one was killed. Oh my goodness, that is probably the most successful siege of military history. Right, well, that was uh, very good fun indeed. A lovely and successful fight for us. Oh my goodness, the great city of Lysron only has 34 defenders. I'm pretty sure this is meant to be our capital city. Right, that's fine, we'll just besiege it. We can take back the capital city, which only has 34 defenders, which are all garbage. I'm pretty sure we're going to get a fair few bits of influence for this. Oh, this is going to be lovely. Doesn't really matter that you're trying to build a militia at the same time. I don't think the militia is going to be able to do a good job. Oh, and some of your garrison is abandoned. Okay, you're down to 11. Great start. Great start, ladies and gentlemen. Excellent start. We can probably uh, just defer this one to the tactics, I think. We're also approaching 1.5 million gold. Oh, and now the all of the garrison's abandoned. It's down to just 
two militia men standing against an army of 81. <sighs> goodness okay surely they just surrender it at this point let's send the troops in a job done we only get 0.6 influence for it please we took back the capital city i suppose there wasn't that many men in the fight but still it's the fort that counts now when it comes to lyceron we can trade with these guys because we recently put them under siege food is exceedingly expensive so i've just sold a bunch of our grain at a ridiculous price which it really should never have been allowed to sell at but the game says oh it's okay because you know they've been sieged they haven't had access to much food so thank you game that's enough to level up our trade skill as well very good now one way you can make a lot of money in this game is just attacking caravans and of course because we're at war with one of the empires we have a very legal right to attack and kill all of their caravans now we're not exactly a robber but um we do like the idea of stealing from other merchants because if we steal from other merchants they don't have much money and their money will be ours all right we're now sending the men in for a glorious battle i'm not too sure what's going to happen here but it should be good to see this is the caravan ahead of us as you can see they have a fair few bits of cavalry but we generally outnumber them two to one admittedly their men are very skilled oh wait i have a super long pointy spear don't i i can use this for cavalry dueling there we go little pokey stick wow this is it i think we've almost completely done it oh i don't actually think we've even lost a single man the auto resolve for this battle said it would be a tough fight this has proven that it has not been i think it was mostly because the enemy's composition consisted of horse-based cavalry guards and then archers and it turns out archers were not the best form of defense and there we go glorious victory we lost only one man and we defeat an entire caravan you know what that means ladies and gentlemen a lot of money we get all of the prisoners but most importantly we get all of their goods and they had quite a fair bit of food hidden away there now food is good now you might be thinking why is food good well if you remember we recently took back this lovely town over here and this town does not have much food we do have food and we're going to make a nice trade deal here all right i've bought a metric ton of fish and I'm hoping that I can now run all the way over to Zionica here where they probably don't have much food and drop off all of my lovely fish supplies. This is the hope. We are now playing the markets in order to deliberately manipulate my trade skill. We're going to be very good at it as well. I mean, whilst all of this is going on, I've been basically ignoring my own castle, but you know, it's fine. It seems to be doing okay. We're getting almost a thousand in taxes from them each day, which is a good start. Oh my, there's only 71 defenders of Poros. Okay, you have me interested. Oh, there's an enemy lord here. Now, you know what? We're going to be siege of the town of Poros. Why not? Let's give it a go. Shouldn't even take us too long to build a nice lovely little siege camp. Right, and here we go. It's time for us to lead an assault on Poros and retake it for the glory of our empire. Hey, maybe if we do a good job, they'll even give us the city. Now this fight, even though they technically do have roughly even numbers with us, we are going to completely and utterly crush them for the sole reason that they are almost entirely made of militia, whereas we are fully trained fighting soldiery dudes who are about to go and do some good old soldiering and fightings. Well, just look at these lovely city walls. Imagine how nice it would be to defend them if you had, you know, something more than just a bunch of militia. Ah, oh, yes, this is a good spot. I can just plink away at all of them whilst they fight and my men do glorious battle with the enemy. Lovely stuff indeed. Well, there we go. Glorious victory. We've managed to win the battle. Lovely stuff. And with minimal losses as well. Only seven men. I got 187 influence, 22 renown, which is of course very important. Renown is lovely because renown allows us to improve our clan and improve Proving our clan means that we can have more men who can fight better and do better. Or we even get a bunch of grain from the city after we occupy it. Lovely. So there we go, the city is now ours. We can continue and we can walk into the city and sell some lovely stuff. So it's time for us to trade. Because as you can see, they have absolutely no food whatsoever, excluding a few grapes. So we can sell a bunch of our grain for lots of profit, some olives for profit, and most importantly, all of that fish, which only costs us about 19 to buy, has just been sold off. Let's level up that trade stat. Oh. Oh, 107 lovely stuff oh, an enemy lord's party all right let's catch up to him and try and do debates come on you know you want to join our side please come on it's great fun all right yes let me debate with the enemy lord or actually instead um could just kill him all right there we go we fight lovely stuff i'm just going to delegate this to my lovely men they can do the fight oh good stuff not too many losses good and there's all the renown and influence I wanted. You're at my mercy. Well, you can be my prisoner. That sounds fun. Oh my, we've run into Lucian here. Oh, he looks good fun. The odds are not in my favor today. Oh, well, actually, I generally do tend to win these fights, even if they're not in my favor. So it's 203 against 78. Apparently the auto resolver thinks that we have a decent chance here. And part of me wants to actually just send the troops in and see what they can do. Um, so auto resolver, away you go. Oh, auto resolver, you've done it again. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, that's a victory. Mm, yeah, this is fine. This is perfectly fine. That's a done fight. <laughs> Oh, right, you're my prisoner. This is it. Everyone's my prisoner. We're just gonna abduct all of the enemy lords. Lucan, pretty sure you're even the leader of the enemies. You're just gonna be abducted permanently now. 90 prisoners. Oh, that's um too many to really calculate. We're just gonna leave them be. They can just wander the countryside. Oh, and this is a fair amount of equipment as well. Some fish, some grain, butter, cheese, all of that. Lovely stuff. This will keep my men happy. I'm abducting all your horses now. We almost have 18,000 uh, actual goods capacity, which is stupid to really believe. Hey, it's all fine. Sea Raiders. Oh, I love fighting Sea Raiders. These guys are great fun. Let's just upgrade some of my men. We can even turn our Imperial Veteran Archers into Veteran War Horse Archers. Lovely, let's do that. I mean, we have horses to give them. Although, actually, I don't think it's going to give them the horses if we use the exploit where we tab out of the game. I don't think the horses are going to get spent. And if that's the case, that is very broken. Because the biggest cost of actually upgrading troops to ride horses is the fact that you have to give each and every one of them horses. But look. Luckily, we can just jump to the inventory and I'm hoping, yeah, it looks like our actual count of horses didn't really go down. Or if it did, it did so not by very much. Now, the best thing about having your own villages is you can buy all of their resources at lovely cheap prices. We just bought a bunch of iron ore for 25 and we know that it sells for about 120 at most cities. This provides us with a very terrifying quantity of purchasing power. Oh my goodness, yes, we are going to destroy most of the game's economy. Although, to be fair, we already have. We have about 2 million in the bank. There's also a fun little cheesy thing you can do with the AI in this game, and that is you can effectively go up to them and destroy AI armies. So let's say you wanted to defeat the army of the enemy king. What you do is you need to first make sure you're not at war with him, then go into a trade deal with him. What you do is you hand over a bunch of food, horses, weapons, you name it, in return for all of his gold. And without any of his gold, he suddenly can't pay any of his troops, and most of his army will suddenly desert him, and continuously desert him, because most kings don't actually have the money to maintain an army of a large size. This means that you can defeat the armies of enemy kings with literally just about 5,000 tons of fish. Oh, and you get paid for it, of course. Now, ladies and gentlemen, another war has just started. We've recently finished the war with the Northern Empire, and yet again, about a month later, another war has started with the Northern Empire. Yes, you can probably see a bit of repetition going on here. Now, this is terrible news because we recently leveled up and we can have 108 men in our party, but we only have 91. So, let's find a way of increasing the amount of men we have. Well, what you want to do is simply hop on over here to clan, go to parties, and create a brand new party with our fantastic friend here, Uslav Kolbiter. Now, Uslav is going to build an entire party. He just made a brand new party out of thin air. It contains two very high-level infantry, very nice. Oh, and some skirmishes, some archers, some horsemen. That's great because horsemen come with horses, and horses are pretty expensive. Oh, and all of these lovely footmen and skirmishers, lovely stuff, right? We'll just buy all of these. All right, thank you very much, Uslav. Uh, it didn't cost me anything to create your entire party, but here it is. <laughs> oh, Uslav, but now that you've done that, I'm actually going to have you disbanded because um, I don't need the two men you have. So there we go. You're just quickly going to disband yourself. And there we go. He's disbanded. And now we can just quickly take Hero to our party and he's immediately back on board. And then once again, we can just have him make a brand new party <laughs> with even more men. Oh my goodness. There we go. Here's Uslav's new party of even more dudes. Oh, God, Uslav, you're incredible. You know what, we're going to have him stick at the size he is, and we're just going to have him follow us around. If he costs us money, it doesn't actually really matter, because, you know, we have so much. Oh my goodness, we're attacking Lokan Castle, and for some reason, the garrison has sallied out to attack us. Oh, this is great news, because it means we've probably won. The power levels are 50-50, but I'm going to hazard a guess and say if I send the troops in, we're going to win this bad boy. Yes, we are. The main reason being that we were fighting almost entirely militia, and militia just do not stand up against anything which has armor. So there we go. We've just improved our tactics and captured ourselves a castle. We now have far more prisoners than we really have any right to control. Well, this is fine. I guess we continue the siege though, even though there's no one inside the garrison. Oh my goodness. Game, there is no one defending this castle. We could literally just gently tap on the door. We don't need to build siege towers to get into the castle. There's no one there. <laughs> this is fine. This is fine. Oh, there we go. Job done. We won the castle. Lovely stuff. Nice and easy. Oh my goodness. I've encountered 
Wizard Lek here, who apparently hates us with a minus 64 amount. I imagine it's probably because we just stole his castle. Yeah, he does not seem to like us at all, but it's fine. We can just send in our armies. Oh, we even got backed up by the tiny little village we just took over. Nice. Anyway, that's a lovely fight. Tactics are now up to 39. Good stuff. Anyway, you're now my prisoner, Lek. Welcome. Oh my lord, the tactic system is so crazily overpowered. As long as your men are just slightly upgraded, they just always win in like the rock, paper, scissors simulated battles which are going on. It's so broken. Anyway, it doesn't matter because we've uh, just defeated one of the many enemy armies which were running around. In fact, I'm pretty sure we're in. we might even stand a chance of sieging down this entire city right here. Oh, I might be able to actually win an election here for the Onika Castle. Right, yes, I'm going to sink as much of my influence as I can into this bad boy and I probably should win this. There we go. I've won it with the support of the majority of everyone who voted, who I'm pretty sure was just me. Oh, we're now trade level 114 after that lovely trade where we just dumped off a bunch of hardwood, which is a great sign. And now that we actually have our brand new castle over here, the Onika Castle, which of course we've technically made assaults on about four times now, probably going to have to go and pay it a visit. Maybe drop off some men. Ah, oh, here's our brand new castle, Onika Castle. We of course now have almost 3.5 million gold, and oh look, here's our lovely new castle. It is struggling with food at the moment, which is a bit of an issue. And loyalty as well, that is not the best. Although we can fix all of this by queuing up a bunch of gardens and irrigation, and at the same time dump a bunch of our own money into the castle. That should speed up production very nicely. Let's go try and take Zionica. I'm not even sure if this is possible, but we do have 163 men on our side now. Defenders 483. Oh my goodness, 379 militia here. You know what? I actually want to give this a go. This is a massive city, and if we get it, this is basically a set for a very long time. I'm going to use the auto-resolve mechanic, because even if we lose it, that's fine. We're going to get a bunch of experience from it. Oh, they've sallied out to attack us. Oh, now that's very exciting. Let us fight this. This is going to be good. Oh my goodness, this is incredible. Oh, yes. So oh, the tactic system. Sure, we're losing a lot of men, but it honestly doesn't matter. Oh, that was the fight of the century. 367 kills by our party. A group of five Imperial Legionaries killed 47 men. Oh my god. It is downright ridiculous ridiculous how much damage some of these units can do. The legionaries and the guard especially are just amazing. Well, we now have 150 prisoners technically if we really wanted, although that would be absolute chaos. Um, you know what, we'll give it a go because we can ransom all of these prisoners when we get into the next town and that's going to cause a lot of chaos. We can also immediately refill our ranks by buying some of the prisoners out. There we go, that's going to help. And then let's reward our men by upgrading them. There you go. They did a fantastic job today. Alright, you know what, let's go send our troops in. It's time for us to win. Oh, there we go. We've taken it. Oh, Zeonica is ours. A glorious success. I think we could probably get rid of our army now. All right, time for me to go ransom my troops. Oh, 9,000. That's one hell of a ransom. Now that we recently took it over, we can also sell some of the goods we bought here for a nice, decent profit, because guess what? These guys are about to starve. Due to the low prosperity of being under a siege, food is not exactly very available at the moment. So uh, yeah, there's a lot of money to be made here. Oh, here comes the grain shipment from the local village. What if we just happen to intercept it and buy all of the grain off of the villagers? Thank you very much, lovely villagers. I'm going to go now sell this for even more. Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. We're sadly at that time, which is the end of the video. You see, Legendary Suspiff has achieved 3.5 million gold. This is more gold than feasibly anyone should have access to in the game. And as much as I would love to play this game for another 48 or so hours in order to level myself up to trade skill 225, I sadly just don't have have the time today. If you would like to see more Mountain Blade Warband and you'd like to see an entire world conquest where we buy all of the settlements in the game, then feel free to give the video a like and give me a shout in the comment section. And hey, if there's enough support for it, we'll continue playing Mountain Blade with the legendary Sir Spiff, that cheeky charismatic bugger, and we'll go purchase the entire world. You might also notice at the moment the world is kind of on fire because the Southern Empire, which we're a part of, has gone to war with most of the known world. The Northern Empire has been all but completely destroyed, and we've also started an invasion of the Kurzate and the Rodok boys as well. Oh, it's all very exciting. Lots of wars happening, lots of opportunities.
opportunities to make money. So hey, if you have indeed enjoyed any of the exploits you've seen here in today's video, feel free to give the video a like. And hey, if you have any exploits of your own for this game or of any other games, feel free to slide them into my lovely DMs. I'm sure we can get some fantastic content out of you. As always, a massive thank you to each and every one of my majestic patrons who make these fantastic videos all the more possible. Thank you very much, you lovely majestic sausages. And if you're sat there and you're wondering what video you'd like to watch next after this, well, look no further than this one on screen now. I've chosen it to be perfect for you after watching this video. Trust me, you're gonna enjoy it. So go grab yourself another cup of tea and sit down for just one more. Anyway, I'll see each and every one of you in the next one. Have an absolutely lovely day and goodbye for now.